Hi, uh, welcome to today's update in uh, PhonoCollab at Ausnit E. I would like to share some of the latest developments in the project with you and uh, maybe you can spar on it and give, give me some feedback and some help. Thank you. First, I would like to introduce you to some background information that you need to have in order to understand what uh, I'm trying to say. This is the software we're working with. It's called Phonocollab. It has six players. Each one you can control using a smartphone. So in order to have the smartphone communicate you just go here and you just choose the right port 8004 and then you go enter. The two things should be on the same Wi-Fi network. The Wi-Fi network I'm using is is the computer's own Wi-Fi so I can just connect it with this software called Connectifier. Okay. So this is um, this is the app and as you can see when I use this app I'm controlling can you see that? I'm controlling player one. Right. Now the problem I just want to show you how to use each player. Now I want to record a sound so I just take my flute here and I'll just play a little sound for you and I'll record it. Now I'm using the the app to record the sound right? and you go you check out here what's happening in the loop part of here. So you see a nice uh, waveform here in this part called loop but you don't hear anything. Now the thing is that in order to hear it you need to go like this with the smartphone and you might see down here it starts recording. So you're supposed to, I'll just turn off the sound, you're supposed to say something meaningful for example Oh it's so great to be part of Ausnit E and I'm really looking forward to it. Right. So this uh, hilarious uh, phrase is going to be controlling the sound of the loop. So at any time I can change the sound of the loop I can go and this will be the next one, oh, I can go yeah, whatever. Now you have uh, a loop sound and, 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 and uh, it's a way to form it. Now the problem I want to show you is that in this part this is where you control the sound. So you will have um, some participants uh, moving in space with this one so they will be controlling sound using this one while moving in space. You can have up to six smartphones at the same time working. Now um, my problem was that the way now it works is that you have the, the this axis is gonna be it's gonna be uh, volume right so um, it's gonna be like proximity equals more sound, more volume, right? And uh, this distance equals less sound. So the this the closer you are to this imaginary place, the the, the louder the sound is. And there you have ex the um, this axis is going to be like left and right, like basic uh, stereo uh, two uh, loudspeakers, right? So the problem was. I wanted to to um, do something different. Now uh, I would like to because we have um, several smartphones working at the same time, right? Uh, so I wanted to have the smartphones or the the place where people would be in space uh, be what is um, affecting loudness of each sound. So it's the relation between two players that will. Uh, do something about loudness. The closer they are, the louder the sound should be. So, I want to make this change, right? I want it to be this way that not regarding where you are in this XY field, this your sound will be the same loudness, right? If you stay still for a number of milliseconds, the sound stops, right? Um, if you are closer to the neighbor, right? 
the sound will uh, be uh, louder. Okay, now that's, that's the background of the problem. So in order to address this issue I've been making a, uh, this uh, project uh, patch in the software called MaxMSP. Now you can see this um, So this XY pad, pad here is, is uh, representing this one, right? They're not connected now, okay? This is player number one, and this is another player, right? This is number two, or number three, or four, or five, or six, right? So what I want to do is to compare the two, right? So I'm taking the X and Y um, values of each player, and I want to compare them, right, to see how close are the two ones? So I can go like this. If I say that this one is this is a person, right, being in the corner of the um, of of the, of of the floor, right, and this is another person getting closer, right. The closer he is to the first one, now you see that value down there. I hope you can see it. It will grow. Right now it's 0 0.4, right. Um, so that's the basic uh, math uh, of these things, right. And when I get far, farther away, it, it gets smaller. So I want to see for each player. Now I want to ask for, for player number one, how close are the other players, right? Okay, so I built this one, this basic cell. Uh, and, and now I put it in this object. How can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. This object called poly. So where I have six of the same, six times the same, right? They are like this, and um, in this one you see it's player number six, which is evaluated together together with player number one, right? Okay, so here I put the six players, um, and I, I can test what happens to the sound. And I just to make it simpler, I just put it this way, so you can see only players and so on, right? So now I want to check this. This number is the proximity factor, right? So now player number one is totally alone and he plays at a volume of 0 0.6 which is like a little more than half strength right now we have player number two getting closer getting closer getting closer and you see that player number one now plays at uh, uh, almost one this is maximum right so he gets farther away and closer now, this is how it works right now I wanted to make sure that if the next one comes closer the same thing happens but the first one can go away and the number stays the same. Now player number one will go away from the other two players but get closer to player number two for example and then it goes back, right? So this is the basic uh, math part of it. Now uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to separate, uh, I want to make sure that when player number, uh, let's let's part from player number one. Now, if, if player number two is active, but player number three, four, five, and six are not there, right? They, or they are standing still. Now I want to make sure that um, they 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 share the loudness of the of the of the totality, right? So if there are three players, they will divide loudness between them, uh, so that when two players are close and the third one is not, they will not be more much more loud, right? They will be relatively less loud. So if three players are together, it will be louder, all of them will be louder. Uh, and one single player being alone somewhere is, is going to be relatively less loud, but you can still hear him. So that's the next mathematical problem. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, because it, it's really, really fascinating to look at, I, I suspect. And I hope you can uh, share uh, your ideas on the, these problems. It's math, and my own approach is uh, very eclectic. I really don't have a mathematical answer to it, and I. But I still suspect that this kind of way, this way of working, would be really interesting for kids, in the sense that they would be confronted with real problems, real problems, uh, and the solutions would be uh, tangible. Right? It's not just about uh, basic math for its own sake. It's about using, trying to find solutions. So um, that's another thing I would love to to use MaxMSP, but MaxMSP is very expensive. So there's an alternative called PD Pure Data, that would be really cool to work with with school kids. So that's just a possible 
extra dimension that we could think of in our project. Thank you for today and uh, I will be off now. The weather is, uh, is, is alarming, it's a storm out there and now it's really dark as you might see, now it's totally dark outside. Um, and uh, so I'm saying uh, thank you and uh, good night.